We talked about certificate transparency in part one, and now we're going to take a look at the expect CT header or expect certificate transparency header that goes along with web applications. So now that we know that the certificate transparency places those signed certificate timestamps into the certificate, we can have browsers take advantage of that feature by having the expect CT header be in the HTTP response coming back from our application. So right now we don't have the header enabled on our site. Let's take a look at how we would do that. So over in Apache, we're gonna modify the configuration file for our site. There's a couple of caveats. Usually we would put our headers into an include file because we would want them to be included on both our HTTP and HTTPS version of our sites. And we probably want those headers to be on all of our virtual hosts. So it makes sense to just put it into a file and then include that file into the config. But the expect CT header, kind of like the HSTS header, only goes on the HTTPS version of the site. We don't enable it for the HTTP version. It doesn't make any sense outside of the context of HTTPS. And in this case, we'll just use the header directive. So we header set expect CT, that's the name of the header. And that's always the same value, it's a static value. Then you have three characteristics you can pass in. We see two of them here. One is whether or not you want to enforce. So do you want the browser to enforce certificate transparency or do you only want it to report violations? If you want it to enforce, you put the keyword enforce here, just like it's specified here. If you want it to report, you can provide a report URI to which violations will be sent, then you would have to set up that endpoint to collect those reports. You also tell the browser how long to cache the results of checking the certificate transparency. In this case, we have it set to about a day, 86,400 seconds. We're gonna save that result. And since we modified the file, we have to restart the Apache service or reload the service so that it'll read the config file. But either way, we have to get Apache to read that file in. We'll just use reload in this case. So now we have that header on the HTTPS version of the site. Let's use headers live to watch what happens when we browse. So we're gonna go to the HTTPS version. And then if we take a look at the results, here in the headers that came back from the site, about fourth from the bottom, we see our new expect CT header following the correct syntax, just like is specified in the documentation for expect CT. And just for fun, let's take a look at the HTTP version of the site where we didn't configure the header, which of course we, we shouldn't configure the header on HTTP per the documentation. And we look at the response and as expected, we do not see the expect CT header in the HTTP version of the site. So hopefully this helps you get your expect CT header set up. And again, if you need to review what certificate transparency is all about, check out the part one of this video series.